So, um, where was I? Oh yeah, an idiot abroad. Finally back on track with this poor video. Check out part 1 if you haven't or if you need a refresher. Also, I have a Discord server now. That's what I've been waiting for, that's what it's all about. I don't really know what I'm doing with it, but yeah, it's there. I went ahead and just made it because a few of you have asked me to. So let's grow it together. I'll put the link in the description and I hope to see you there. Now back to the video. Nice. Right, Carl, we've arranged for you to go to Egypt to see the Great Pyramids. Right, go on then, enjoy the pyramids. Better. I don't know. Oh no, that's not gonna blend in one bit. No one wears these anymore. And he's even, not even wearing a shrike. The black thing has to dangle behind, not in front. <laughs> oh my god. I'd be quite happy going home now. Honestly. You know, I've been here a few days. Alright, I haven't seen the pyramids yet, but I bet most of the locals haven't. Because that's what happens, isn't it, when you live somewhere? You don't bother seeing the sort of touristy stuff. I haven't even seen Buckingham Palace yet. Exactly, that's what I was saying earlier. People think that if they lived here, they would be visiting every day or every week and seeing stuff and blah, blah, blah. But it just, it's not, nothing new is there. So once you've seen it a few times, it's just not interesting anymore. To me, it's even interesting to you in the first place because not everyone cares about this stuff. Steve sorted out with Ahmed to show me around a museum, which apparently is world famous. That's what Steve said. Well, that's the Egyptian Museum, and yeah, that is a famous one. It's pretty big too. I haven't been in a long time. They've renewed it recently, but that when I saw it the first time, I remember it being very spacious. So, Carl, I would like you to join me on a journey through time. The moment we walk in, a long history of splendor and mystery will be unfolding. I will breathe life into history. And that's your typical tour guide dramatic effect. You gotta really set your point. So, um... Uh... I'm not looking forward to going around it, to be honest. You know, I mean, I don't go to museums at home, so I, I don't see what difference it makes just because it's in Egypt. So you have clockwise from pre-dynastic to early dynastic, old kingdom, middle kingdom, new kingdom. So look here, there's a pharaoh who is harpooning, a nine years old boy king. You cannot see the hippo he is harpooning. Why not? See, this is the magic, because with magic, that hippo will come into life. So again, coffin within a coffin, sarcophagus within a sarcophagus. And you can see in the cartouche, is a cartouche is the name of the pharaoh, the boy king. At some point, he was bringing back a pygmy. Was it a portrait? Can you avoid portraying the pharaoh? This is very hard, of course, to reconcile, because the soul will be searching. The car wants to find the pharaoh, the boy king, Tutankhamun. Yes, you do have the cartouche with the boy king, but it helps even more. I'm not good at history by any means. I have... No clue if what he's saying is right or wrong. Coming in here with Ahmed, he's like a kid in a sweet shop. It's just, show you this, show you that. Man. It's mental. And you can't take it all in. It's like going Christmas shopping on, you know, Christmas Eve in a department store. There's too much going on. There's too much to look at. There's too many people. You're being pushed along. It's a nightmare. It's about what I call it a day here and get back to, I don't know, eating fucking cock and bollocks again. Seems more fun than this to me. Yeah, I kind of agree, to be honest here. I'm not a fan of museums either, especially when they're crowded. That just seems to me like a bit over the top, a lot of uh, a lot of gold, a bit sort of Peter Stringfellow-ish. Well, yeah, it is pretty extra, but this was like thousands of years ago. It made sense back then. You can't really judge something this old by today's standard. That's just not fair. Here's just a sign. Can I get uh, two pieces of chicken? Two. What? It's a KFC for deaf people. Oh, that's, that's quite interesting. I didn't even know we had something like that in here. That's good. So what do I have to do? I don't understand. Well, do you just point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, yeah. One of them. For one. Original. I don't quite know what's going on here. Are, are they all there? Thanks a lot. Brilliant. And they have to put the Spider-Man sign. Does that mean something in sign language? Maybe it does actually, I have no clue.
Oh. Or maybe it's not the Spider-Man one. Maybe it's... That was good. Good idea. What, to have a deaf KFC? Well, yeah, because why not? You know, I don't, I don't come in here for a chat. You come in here for food, fast food. I'm taking it up even faster because they're not chatting behind there. A lot of the time in McDonald's, you know, they're all gabbing, aren't they, by the milkshake counter. But in here, it was quick. It's there in front of you. Point, bang, done, out. That is a fair point, to be honest. I never really thought about that. Maybe people should go there instead of the regular one. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, with technology, most of it, you don't really use it, do you? It's kind of like a toy. But seeing them use it, it sort of makes you realise it's a good invention, video calling and picture messaging. That is actually a good point he's making. That's, a, that's wholesome. I like this point of view. But when Ricky sends me a picture, it's that sort of thing. So oh God. <laughs> He's man shit posting back in 2009. He was ahead of his time. So, this is what I'm saying. We don't sort of use it properly. They've got a proper use. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. But also, if you have something and you don't need to be putting it to its proper use, you might as well just have fun with it, no? I'd say that's the most annoying thing about being in this place. Just, just being hassled all the time, no matter where you are, no matter what time of day it is, just constantly hassling you. Uh, hassling is a pretty big problem here, especially for tourists. And right now it also happens to Egyptians like me, because I kind of look not Egyptian, but also they just hassle everyone these days because business is not doing great. All right. All right, clear, it's Steve. Yeah, all right, mate. how's it going? Not too bad, yeah, how are you? More importantly, did you go to the uh, Egyptian Museum today? Yeah, but I've seen that. I went to the Millennium Dome. I saw it. It's all the same stuff. He's not exactly wrong because so many ancient Egyptian stuff is actually on display outside of Egypt in the Louvre in Germany and in probably England as well, since he's mentioning this. It's just, it's everywhere. Except here, ironically, but I mean, personally, I think it's better off this way, to be honest, because Egyptians are just, they don't take care of this stuff properly, and it's all just gonna perish if it's left up to them. Sad how we need foreigners to come and take care of our own heritage for us, because of its humanitarian value. Like, we we don't take care of our own shit. It's just, it's just really sad. Yeah, well, I've got something a little bit more cuts up your streets if you did like museum. Go on. It's not my sort of night at all. It's just not the sort of entertainment thing I do. I mean, it's nice going down any river on a boat, but I do it in the day. At night, it's pointless. You can't see anything. Now, um, during the day, it's freaking hot. You don't want to do a tour in the river during the day because the humidity from the sun evaporating the water is just going to suffocate you. Trust me. Better off doing it at night or sunset. <laughs> it's that thing, it's like, you know you're there for a couple of hours, there's no getting away from it. So they could do anything once you're on there. Oh yeah, but like, nothing is gonna happen. This is a big cruise with many people on it. <laughs> the worst thing that could happen is food poisoning at this point. They had some entertainment on with someone whizzing round and round and round. And he starts off, he's got like a quilt round him and he starts spinning. And it was only when it had been spinning for about three minutes that I thought, oh, actually, it's pretty difficult. It's just been spinning. It'll be getting dizzy in a bit. Yeah, to be honest, these people, I don't really call, know what they call them in English, but what they do is impressive. This constant spinning, they go on like this for like half an hour at a time or maybe even longer. I know I couldn't do it, but they do it somehow, which is pretty impressive. It's not the most entertaining thing, if you ask me, but it's still an impressive thing to do. And it went on for ages. It's not the sort of thing you have to watch whilst he's doing it. You just glance over now and again, you know, he's still going, mm, having a bit of turkey. Yeah, it kind of gets a bit annoying after a while, like being around one of those, because it's just it's so distracting. And me personally, it gives me anxiety that he's going to tip over or something or knock something off. Like, they never do. But it's just, I don't like being around them. The, the colours and that were good, and he sort of kept the room quite cool. You know, it's quite hot in there, so you got him wafting about, creating a draft. Well, yeah, I guess that's a good use for it. It's natural ventilation. <laughs>
قلت له الو قال لا الو حبيبتي وحشاني قلت له انت كمان وحشني انا انا جاي لك دلوقتي قلت له يخرب بيتك ما يجيش جوزه في الحمام I didn't know what was going on with the comedian. I mean, jokes anyway. Even if he spoke English, humour's different, isn't it, everywhere you go? Uh, the jokes aren't funny, to be honest. Like, there's no point in translating them because, you, as he said, humour is different. But even to me personally, it's not funny jokes. <laughs> it was a terrible night, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? I hated it. It's, it's not my sort of thing at all, that. When I got up and was dancing, because I did it just because I thought, well, I'm here now, and Ricky and Steve don't want me to do it. They know I'd hate it, so I thought I might as well enjoy it. So I got up and had a dance. <laughs> and she told me that, you know, I was the best dancer she'd ever seen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the part everyone is waiting for on the cruise. That's kind of brave of him, though, to do that. And he's not bad at it either, to be honest, this is okay. I would be horrible at it, but he's doing fine. Quite confident, like, no Egyptian man has ever done what he's done. People just don't do that here. <laughs> also, he's kinda cute, to be honest. The traffic's horrendous. Just... It's not just the traffic, it's just beeping. But it just seems to be like people letting on to each other at four in the morning. Like, go home, what are you doing? I mean, that song walked like an Egyptian. No one's walking. Everyone seems to be in a car at all hours, just, just beeping. <laughs> yeah, people overuse their horns here all the time. It's just, like, they do it, like, almost as a reflex. Like, if you're driving, nothing has happened or changed for a few minutes, might as well honk a few times or if you're stuck behind someone just keep blasting at them like that will make any difference it's not enough is it it's not enough to say something's amazing just because they're old because you can get an old person who's done that all their life you wouldn't go they're amazing you go no they're a lazy bastard they don't fucking old. so age shouldn't really make something special well i mean that's kind of true for short things but when something is this ancient and still holding up that is impressive you have to admit like that's a bit of an ignorant statement there i'm not worrying about who built them because it's ages ago really when i first bought my first house i didn't go who built it i want to know is it safe is it structurally sound um is it haunted Whoa. why the fuck are you on the roof my guy what What's the rush? He's been here for 4,000 years. What's he doing? Ah, oh, my ass. This is mental. I mean, if you thought it would be a good idea to hang on the roof of a car driving through a desert, then honestly, you don't get to complain about your ass or about anything, really. But I mean, the series is called An Idiot Abroad. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of shit. You don't normally see any of this, do you? You don't see that many buses there. It looks like it's sat in the middle of the, like a nice desert. But it isn't, is it? It's just a building site. I'm half tempted to ask for hard at. I mean, it's not even bits of old pyramid, is it? You've got all sorts of, you've got bricks here from like council houses and that. It's literally just a, uh, people have brought up shit and dumped it here. Yeah, littering is a pretty big problem for the pyramid area, unfortunately, which is, Kind of embarrassing, honestly, like, you would expect people to respect something like this, but nope. Which is why, as I said, I think, personally, our stuff is better off sold abroad and kept there. At least it's gonna be safe there and appreciated how it should be. It's like some of our planet of the apes, isn't it? Barren. It's a desert, of course it's barren, what do you expect to have there? It's like a little tornado, isn't it? Yeah, you don't see that in the brochure, do you? You see, I've always wanted to see a tornado. That, that, that is on my wish list before I die. Because it's natural, it's a natural thing that I don't understand. I find it kind of ironic that he's not impressed by the thousands of year old structure next to him, but by a little tornado of literal garbage. <laughs> That's, eh, he's a weird fella. The design actually is a bit odd, isn't it? Because the square footage, the floor size is massive. But the upstairs bit is, is tiny. 
very profound analysis of a pyramid which starts wide and gets to a single point. <laughs> Alright car mate, it's Steve here. How was the pyramid? I imagine it was uh, extraordinary, wasn't it? Uh, Ricky and I have got another, another treat for you. We've tracked down a couple who, they're lovely people, but they've got sort of different views, alternative views on the pyramids. And uh, they're called Andrew and Saya. Let us know how you got on. The Great Pyramid was built by Atlantean survivors with extraterrestrial help. And that they built the pyramid with the help of sound, because sound was used uh, very much in Atlantis. Fucking... Okay, we've officially reached the point where I comment on conspiracy theories about the pyramids. Are you happy? <laughs> well, Andrew and Sayer were just saying that they use the pyramids at night. Uh, they just nip in there to do some meditation and what have you. So they said I can go with them, but I've got to learn to do some meditation first. So they've just given me some words to learn. Uh, once I've done that, you know, they said they'll tap me in. So it seems fair enough, doesn't it? Aside from this bullshit theory, you have people who actually follow ancient Egyptian religion and they visit the sites to pray and do rituals and all that. They still exist and they're actually common enough for them to be their own category of category of tourists here. Anek Shashen Obeinu. Are they washing up before we do this? Leave the washing up, uh, Sayer, it's spoiling the mood a bit. Dude, I mean, I'm gonna pause your life for a ritual. Even Muslims don't do that. They just go about the day when it's it. when it's time to pray. They just take a break, go pray, and then get back to whatever they're doing. As simple as that. You don't like have to prepare beforehand. But I imagine it's his first time, so eh, maybe it makes sense. You can't escape noise in it. And there goes the call for prayer. I was just talking about it. How long is this going to go on now? A couple of minutes, two, three minutes. But it's five times a day. Yep, and I would like to point out that there is one at dawn, around four to five o'clock, and they do the same loud call for that. They don't do any special, quieter thing. So if you're there and you're not Muslim, well, fuck you, I guess. Sorry. I tell you what, I bet they don't show you around a property around here at certain times of the day, do they? No, probably not. When you're buying a place, Come on, we've got to get going quick. Why? Just let's go. You buy it, this kicks off. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's funny, but also you probably can't escape these. There's just mosques everywhere, which I guess it would be fine, but it's loud and obnoxious, in my opinion. And there's just so many of them, so wherever you live, you're probably gonna end up close to one anyway. There's so many, in fact, in Cairo that one of its ancient name, or not ancient, one of its old names or nicknames is the city of the thousand, um, I don't know what's the word for it, but it's like this tower thing that they have on mosques. In Arabic, it's called Ma'zana, which is derived from Azan, which is the call for prayer because it where the call comes from, through a microphone, or someone standing there in old days. That was all a bit weird, wasn't it? But I, I liked it, do you know what I mean? I'm into that sort of weirdness. No, no. For me, I wouldn't... Like, I couldn't stand this. I would. This would be the worst part of his visit so far, if it was me. I can't stand bullshit superstition like this. Like, even if the person doing it is peaceful and respectful and everything, it just... It makes my brain melt. I couldn't deal with it. Plus, it means that I'm actually going to go inside a pyramid tomorrow. It's all worth it, won't I? Got another mozzie bite there. It's well itchy, that one. I think it's that same mozzie. It's in the room more than the cleaners are. Let me show my faces still. I don't think they're going to now. I can't see the point. It's like a game of Jenga that's got out of hand. <laughs> okay, I like this analogy, to be honest. That's pretty funny. It does look like a game of Jenga when you think about it. It's not just him, everyone climbs on them. This sign is just there for show because looks above all 
this should be my new slogan to be honest at this point catchphrase motto whatever you get what i mean so yeah i open it yeah. i've um i took a little bit of it so a little bit of uh, a little bit of the uh, pyramid got a little piece uh, i don't think you meant to but it was loose i didn't ship it off it was loose anyway Whatever, why the fuck not at this point? It's weird, isn't it? You're allowed to just wander about on them. If this was at home, there's no way this up would all be roped off, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be allowed anywhere near it. It's not treated like a wonder. It's just like a man-made mountain, isn't it? Exactly, that's what I was saying. People don't treat monuments how they should here. Well, I'm just with Andrew and Sayer again. Uh, they're going to teach me some more chanting before I go in the pyramid. I just couldn't. This is too idiotic for me. I'm sorry. Just no. I don't know what's going on in her head, but you know, I like her. I think she believes in all the energy thing that she's going on about. You know, I, I want to believe it. Uh... You know, it'd be nice if, if something happens or, you know, if I feel like a bit of a, oh, what's that? Let's see what happens. I mean, that's probably just gonna be nocebo effect anyway, because you're told something is supposed to happen, so you might just imagine it and go like, oh, it did happen. It's times like this when I think, you know, I used to have a proper job. What am I doing? This is it then. I'm actually uh, going inside a pyramid. Which... I want to point out that this is probably illegal because you're not allowed into it after visiting hours, as far as I know. So I'm guessing that to get in, they probably bribed the watch guard or someone got bribed then somewhere for them to be inside, or someone just left their post. But if they do this regularly, then I guess they have a connection somewhere. Which is good. I didn't even know you could go in them. I just thought they were like a, a solid structure. Do you know what I mean? Just a load of blocks. But uh, you can get in them, so pretty exciting, isn't it? We are now in the center of our planet. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is super illegal because one, it's supposed to be closed, and two, witchcraft. This looks very much like witchcraft, and this is definitely not gonna be okay. If someone caught them doing this, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be pretty nice. Or maybe they would have to pay someone a nice amount. In ancient PowerPoint. An obsession Literally has absolutely no clue what's going on. He's not even memorized the stuff he's supposed to say. Uh, it's just he, he is like a fish out of water right now. It's pretty funny to watch. I wasn't happy about you know getting in there. Yeah, this is getting creepy. Starting to look like she's gonna sacrifice him or something. What is going on here? This is very sketchy. I'm not good in small spaces anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, it was all right, you know, nothing happened, did it? You know, I got a little bit of a twinge, but I just think that was cramp. But I don't know, she seems fed up, really. But I didn't get anything, but there's no point pretending, is there? That's yeah, because she believes in it, so it's going to work on her, but if he doesn't, it's not going to work on him, and that's going to shake her belief in whatever this is, and that's going to be upsetting for her. I'll tell you what it reminded me of. Me going to a wedding for Suzanne. She likes going to weddings, I hate going. And it was like, I went, I did it all for her, but because I didn't enjoy it, I still get a, a, a moaning at the end of the night. And it was a bit like that, I did all that for her. It was pretty comfy. I mean, you know, compared to the Windsor, I tell you what, I could probably get my head down in there. 
no thank you. I will take a shitty hotel over this. At least there is no mummy parts on the mattress there. As far as I can tell anyway, there shouldn't be. <laughs> Maybe there is. Alright mate, Ricky. I had a good time in Egypt. Did you enjoy the hotel? I picked that one out myself. Um, see you later. Bye. It's not funny, is it? What? Well, I've been living next door to this. I would be so pissed if I was him. Did Ricky put me in that one on purpose? Yeah. Yeah. This is the room Michael Palin was in. I don't know if, I mean, they say travel broadens the mind, but I don't know if it does. Buggers it up. I'm knackered. Okay, that concludes it. This took quite some time to record and my phone died halfway through so I had to charge it up a little bit and continue so yeah I <sighs> hope you enjoy it I hope it was worth it and if you guys have any more ideas or suggestions let me know down below and also thank you guys for the new people coming in the channel has been growing quite nicely recently and I appreciate it keep it happy keep it going please and yeah that's about it I've got nothing else for you now. Until next time, take care. <sighs> Been doing this for fucking ever. <sighs> Finally, some air. Nice.